Okay, so I'm just gonna kind of restate exactly what we had derived before and I raised part of that. But uh, what we found is that when um, X equaled gamma X prime and when T equaled gamma VX prime over C squared, when we combine those two things, the result that we found was the gammas cancel. And we just had uh, T equals VX over C squared. So this actually does in fact give us exactly the parameterized equation that we want here. Uh, but I'm gonna make one slight adjustment. What I wanna do from here on out is I want to talk about units on the t-axis, which are naturally exactly the same as units on the x. And so we're already assuming that, for example, c equals one light year per year, or one light second per second. So when you take c times t, the units of that, we if, if you multiply those two things, we want to use units such that the units of CT match the units of X. And that will be true as, as long as we use a, a, a system like this. So what I'm going to do from here on out is I'm going to talk about the, the vertical axis. Instead of T, I'm going to talk about in terms of CT. So I'm literally just going to redrive or, or, or redefine this entire uh, axis here as CT. And similarly, I'm going to just replace this CT prime. So all we're doing here is we're in, reinforcing, in fact, the fact that our time variable is consistent with our space variable. And now the reason I do that is that that means that this equation here is going to become, if I multiply both sides by C, for example, or if I pull out one of the factors, we have CT equals V over C x. Let me get rid of this here. And now does that look even, can we simplify that further? Yeah. This just becomes ct equals beta x. And this is literally the parameterized equation that we now have. If this is our ct axis, think of that as y. y equals some slope times the x-axis. So that's literally our axis here, or our angle, beta. Now, if we think about it, beta we know has to be between zero and one, and not equaling one. So in this case here, is, does that limit make sense? And sure, um, this axis can't tilt any closer to here than 45 degrees. So a slope of one means that for one year or one light year, you've gone one year. A slope of one means they're directly proportional by a factor of one. And that would in fact be the path that light takes. So we do naturally have a limit. Hey, dang it. Pretty close. And that limit occurs when beta equals one which is exactly what we mean by a light-like trajectory. So when we view these axes in their, in, in their uh, conjugate systems, we have light years, for example, and now in this case, C times T would also be light years. One light year per year times year is a light year. So when we view them in their equivalent systems, the slope is literally that ratio beta. The greatest that can be is one. So this is the slope. Now let's go back and, and my, my, my position, which is, I guess, appropriate uh, earlier. I had said that whatever the angle this is tilted by is gonna be the same thing as that alpha that we had before. Or more specifically, the, the slope before we rearrange the Cs, I said was gonna be the same as the, the angle there. So I'm gonna restate that. We now know that this angle is beta. And let's look over here. And let's now find the linear equation that governs 
the T prime axis. We did it qualitatively before, we're gonna do it quantitatively now, and we are going to find out, you'll see why, those two things have to be shifted by the same. Now, it, it, it's, it's almost predictable at this point, but that really is significant. So um, going through this, let's see. I'm gonna write down here the X prime axis, the line that governs that is CT equals beta X. And what we're gonna find here, the oops, T prime axis is going to be, and we'll fill that in once we have a, once we have a result. Okay, so the question again is, what equation here for T as a function of X in, in these coordinates here, the black ones, what equation corresponds with the line for T prime axis or CT prime, if you will, whatever. Um, notice that at this point, the difference between T and, and, and CT or T prime and, and CT prime is starting to become a little bit like um, not necessary or annoying even. Um, and that's why most uh, most cosmologists will simply just set C equal to one and just don't give a shit about the units. So honestly, like if you stop using C altogether, it's understood that you're properly converting this to the, the same units anyway. And if I slip like that, I don't really care. So uh, you're free to do that if you want to. Um, just with the understanding though, that you always uh, multiply units of time by C to, to equate the two units. Okay, so with that said, Remember that the T prime axis was the set of all points where X prime equals zero. And so we're gonna do exactly the same thing we did before. We're gonna take the Lorentz transformations for, uh, it, well, in fact, the inverse transformations setting X prime equal to zero this time. And then we'll reparameterize them in terms of the S variables. Um, that was a mouthful there. Uh, watch that again and make sure all those words work sense, make sense. So in other words, we have X equaling gamma times X prime plus uh, V T prime, T equaling gamma times T prime plus V X prime over C squared. And I should have left more room, but Remember in this case here, we can set this one to zero. So this becomes gamma VT prime. And we can set this term here to zero. So this becomes just gamma T prime. And I'm just checking to make sure the units here work and they, they do. So we now have, I'll just rewrite like that. And by the way, so obviously gamma is unitless. Just to, just to uh, reconfirm it, gamma is unitless. Um, it's a ratio of ratios. So um, in this case, they both should have the same units. Here, we just need to make sure this has units of space time or well, space specifically. And if you're measuring velocity in terms of, you know, um, a fraction of C, for example, then in that case, you're gonna have meters per second times seconds or whatever. So um, you do get meters. And in the end, what we want to find is some equation t as a function of x, the same as y as a function of x. And really, it's as simple as plugging this into gamma t prime. And now just doing a little bit of rearranging, that's gamma times x over gamma v from up there. I've just rearranged that slightly. And again, we see the gammas cancel. And we have now T equals, um, I'm stupid. Um, what did I do? No, we're good, okay. Uh, yeah, T equals uh, one over V times X. And now the last thing I'm gonna do here, remember this, we're now calling our axis CT. So in order to get to be converted properly, all I have to do here is take, multiply both sides of this equation, which we know to be true for sure, just multiply both sides of the equation by C. And the last thing to see here is that, remember, V over C is beta. So this now becomes one over beta times X. 
and the fact that this beta here, which separated the x prime axis from the x axis. By the way, we can get rid of these two. Uh, assuming that uh, V were treated as positive, we now know that, that beta has to be up like that. Those other two were not possible. So we know that beta is positive here. This right here, which I said before we were calling uh, alpha just for no reason at all, we now can rewrite as shifted by a factor of beta. And specifically the way to think of that. So our, our equation here, we can write CT equals one over beta times X. The reason why I know that's true is if I literally swap the axes. If you swap the axes, whatever you're calling as X now will be CT and you're gonna have the, whatever you're calling is the Y is what you're gonna call X. So X equals beta times CT. This would be if you were to invert these axes and we know analytically that's true because we've already derived that. So simply if you, if you, flop, if you flip these axes, axes, these two angles are exactly the same because what we would then treat as the Y axis has a slope simply of beta times whatever we're now treating as the x-axis. I, I hope that makes sense. If not, it doesn't really matter a lot, but the fact is we can play exactly the same game and we know that the greatest beta can be as one. So the actual slope one over beta, if you will, um, the, the most that can shift over is one as well. So as either one, as beta increases, either one of those angles increases exactly the same until they exactly match for light. And that brings up a really cool point, which I'm gonna pause at. <laughs>